Alright, so for the past two years on YouTube, I've been uploading consistently with type beats, tutorials, and vlogs as far as beat making goes. And I want to show you guys a little bit of what I do when making these videos and in the editing style that I use for everything you guys see here on YouTube. So the main focus of today's video is going to be on the editing of these videos, but I will go over a little bit of the kind of like preparation you can make when starting to record the video. Now if you guys do enjoy this video or find it helpful, be sure to drop a like down below and subscribe for more future content. Now let's get into this video. Now I use Adobe Premiere Pro, if you guys don't know what it is, it's a, kind of like the industry standard for editing videos, but there are a whole bunch of free software out there that you guys can use. I'm gonna be editing this video like I normally would just with the camera on, giving you guys tips and showing you guys how I have my particular style for my videos and hopefully you guys can learn something from that. Now I always organize everything before I go into Premiere Pro. So if you guys look over here, this is the Flex VST 2020 video, the most recent video on this channel. If you guys wanna go check that out, card right up there. It's going to be so helpful for you guys to have audio cues with inside of your recording. Like here, I count down when I'm turning on my camera and right here's gonna be a clap when I actually sync everything. It's gonna make everything a lot easier once I try to sync it like this. You try and match up the audio waves right here, find where that clap is. Oh, that's a cough. <laughs> okay, uh, this is a little bit embarrassing, but I coughed and this is what it looks like. Don't, don't look at this. We're gonna be going over here and just trying to sync up these audio forms. So around like right there. And then get rid of this one since it's not the professional microphone. All right, so just a little over a year ago, ImageLine released the Flex VST to FL Studio 20. That's not a bad take. All right, so we're gonna go over here and that's gonna be my intro. All right, so now I'm just gonna be cutting that right there. Delete all that. And the one thing that I will say that you guys just saw me do is when cutting up a video, right, it's gonna be very important that you don't use your mouse at all. And that's a little bit strange, but you can go a lot faster just by using the controls on your keyboard instead. FL Studio 20. All right, and then I'm gonna make that cut right there. And I wanted to go in and see, is this, damn it, I almost had it, I stuttered near the end, okay. All right, now you can see there that I do mess up quite a bit in these takes. Even recording this video, I have made a lot of mistakes and had to do retakes, but that's okay. Right, so before we move on, I do want to show you guys what it actually looks like after the whole intro is cut up and what you guys should be doing for your guys' intros. Let's go and watch the full 15 seconds all the way through. All right, so just a little over a year ago, ImageLine released the Flex VST to FL Studio 20. And shortly after the release, I did make a video on the Flex VST, but it's extremely outdated now. And I really want to go in and see if it's still worth it here in 2020. So by the end of this video, we're going to be deciding just that. Now let's get into this video. All right, very simple, straight to the point. After 15 seconds, you know what this video is going to be about. And we're already getting started in the video. The one thing that I will say is, and the problem that I did it for a whole long time, is I would have like a minute and a half long intro of me like doing some random stuff outside or just really weird B-roll that just didn't belong. And if you're doing that, now is not the time to be including those little things. Right now you're in the stage of being discovered, so make very short, concise, and informative intros, and then just get into the video, all right? One more thing before we move on, if you look over here, one thing that, that every single software has that is very, I'm very, very grateful for, you can see when the audio starts to peak, like here, I'm taking a breath, and then as soon as you see that little peak right here is when the audio starts. That's where you should be making your cuts. If I was really going that in depth, I could go, I could do like right here, right there and then do that. Extremely outdated now, and I really want to go in and, which sounds really good. If anything, it's probably better, but for my style, I don't like to do that. I don't like there to be a whole lot of silences, but at the same time, I want there to still be like that human interaction. Still really good if you want to do that yourself. And that is one thing that I noticed in my earlier videos, right? So look over here. If I made a cut right here and put it right there, look how awkward this silence is before I start talking is again, this video. That was good. You see, it's like, what was the what was the point of that silence? You always wanna to go to where this is right here or when there's a video cue, and I'll go over that a little bit later on too. All right, so I started cutting up the next part of the video right here, and I found something you guys might uh, get some value out of. We were just talking about video cues, right? And you can see right here, mirror pack called Big Bad Bundle. So there, I pointed to my screen, which if I'm having this right here, they're not gonna know what I'm talking about. What I can do over here, now it's going to be on the bottom right there. All right, there's my face, there's everything else. So here the video cue is going to be my hand pointing at something. So I want to start near the, the beginning. So here I'm just gonna make a cut right there and right here. I'm going to delete this part and make this one go back to the original. And then I can zoom in over here. I called Big Bad Bundle. I see that's perfect, all right? Now usually when I first started, I would make the cut over here where the audio file is, like an audio cue like we've been talking about, but it feels kind of unnatural where here they can start to read it before you even start saying it. All right, so now I'm gonna go and turn off my camera. I'm gonna be editing this like normal, but if anything comes up that I wanna show you guys, I'm gonna make a note of it and then we'll talk about it once I have everything all cut up, okay? Okay, so I just got done chopping everything up and I did take a couple different notes here about some tips that I can give you guys when chopping up the video. All right, so here's the first clip that we're gonna be looking at. If you look down at the audio file over here, you can tell this is where we start to play the beat again. And this is gonna be the great thing about having two separate audio tracks, all right? So if I play the clip like normal right here, not fast enough. So you can hear that when we start to play the beat again right there. But since I do have those different tracked out audios, I can just go right here, cut that, and we're done. That's it. Not fast enough. 
and it just flows a little bit more seamlessly through. And having your microphone separated from your desktop audio is gonna have multiple benefits, all right? Now, I use Streamlabs OBS to capture all of my video and audio. So in there, they make it very easy to separate those tracks. It's also a free service if you guys wanna go check that out. All right, now here's the next clip that we're gonna be looking at. Find some sort of layer for that. No, I grab I grabbed Keyscape, I'm an idiot. <laughs> it's just a habit, man. I always grab Keyscape or Omnisphere, a one trick pony. All right, so all this right here is just fluff. It has nothing to do with the video that we're talking about. You might think like a lot of your favorite YouTubers do this sort of thing and I love doing it too. I love putting in those like imperfections, but here is the cold, hard truth. And that's going to be that nobody cares about you yet. Nobody cares about me yet. So this little fluff, this little gag that I just did can actually make people click off of the video. So all I'm going to do is hit shift delete and it is no longer in the video. Now the next tip is going to be right here. All right. So I'm going to play both of these parts right here and you're going to see if they blend seamlessly together. Okay, so right there, we are music producers. We are making videos about music. So if the cuts are really off and it might even ruin the melody, then it can take people out of the experience of the video. So that's what you wanna try and find that certain little pattern that it can fit within for that transition. All right, now the next tip is going to be with the exact same clips right here that we just saw, and that's going to be cut near the end of a long process, all right? If you're just gonna be starting the EQ, don't start from the start of the EQ all the way to the end. I think it's much more efficient to go in near the end of the process. Like right here, right? I'm already well within the EQ process. You can see I've already done certain things. Things, so I just want to show you guys the end result more than anything. Because there's nothing more boring than just seeing somebody EQ an instrument for like three to four minutes. All right, it's just people are gonna click off from that. All right, so one of the other benefits that I was talking about for having different audio tracks is going to be blending different tracks together. So if you see right here, we're gonna be interrupting the melody just because I'm saying something right here and the musicality sounds kind of weird for it. It's still pretty full. Now we're gonna add some pro R to it. So I actually did, right after that, did a little bit of an example for you guys to the point where I got my my camera and my audio and pushed it within into the last clip. So you're gonna see my face cut right here, but it's not gonna ruin what's going on in the screen recording or the screen audio. That sounds pretty good right now. Now I am gonna be using some of the sounds from, and this is gonna help blend the video even more. And then if over here, this is where the track ended. And then I just put it out to right here, just so it can have that bleeding out and it sounds more cohesive. Just little fine things that you might not even realize when you're watching my videos. And one thing that I cannot preach enough is hype yourself up a little bit. If something awesome happens in the beat or in the video in general, react to it. People love to hear that sort of thing, right? So let's go and play this right here. That actually sounds really good, man. I'm really liking this. So by doing that, you're showing that you're enjoying what's going on and being entertained. That will encourage the viewer to show that they're having a good time as well. All right, so that is all the video chop up tips that I've got for here. And now we can move on to the outro. And the first step is going to be make it clear that the video is coming to an end. Perfect. That is going to be our loop. Simple as that. Now, before I send you guys off into the final beat, I do want to mention that I have created a whole lot of playlists for you guys down in the description below. Now, by saying that right there, I'm promising the final beat is coming very shortly, and then I make my promotional stuff, like the playlists or the pack that I'm releasing. And the reason why I'm doing that is because the second that you start promoting yourself when somebody does not care about you yet, they're going to click off right then and there. They don't care what's going on after that. The video's done, right? So by promising the end results coming right after this, that will encourage them to stick around a little bit longer. So here's the most important part of any outro, okay? And this goes for any video, whether you're making music, video games, anything. Did the video deliver? You have to ask yourself, what did you promise in the beginning? What was the video about? And did you get to that point in the body of the video? Because we are storytellers here and we had a beginning where we promised something, the middle where we solved that problem, and then now we are at the resolution or the climax of it all. And if you can be real with yourself and say, yes, I did deliver everything that I promised, then you are good to go. Now this next part's gonna be completely optional. You don't have to do it, but I think it's really nice if you did. And that is going to be having a send off tag that you put at the end of all of your videos. And no, I don't mean pre-recorded stuff. I say this every single time I end a video. And if you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe for more future content. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Something very simple like that. A call to action to subscribe and like the video is always appreciated. And then saying that you're gonna see them in the next video, hoping that they stick around. Just little things like that, really nice. So those are all the tips that I've got as far as the arrangement of the video. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is making it a little bit more professional. And like we've been saying all video, another benefit to having separate audio tracks over here is now I can go into my dialogue and put some compression, limiting, and EQ on there without ruining any of the actual music. And I have my own preset right here that I can just put onto anything. And all it has right here is a compressor, which I like to put down to around like 14.4 is usually pretty good with a ratio of two and then zero makeup. Done. And then that's gonna be paired with this right here, which is a hard limiter, which I have set to minus 12. Now, generally when you're doing this sort of thing, I do recommend that you go back and listen to your track before you do anything else. 
but I've done this so many different times, I know I can just hit copy and paste it to everything else and it'll sound great. And yes, I know that I should be EQing everything too, but that's just, I didn't, I didn't want to do it. <laughs> now this next part's going to be only for Premiere Pro users. I don't know if there's any other way to do it on any other software, but if you are on Premiere Pro, this tool saves my life every single video that I make. I'm gonna highlight every single clip right here, hit Control Shift D, and that's gonna have it so it has a crossfade on every single track with two frames. So not enough to notice it when you hear it, but nothing is going to clip, click, or pop at all. And I do believe that this is going to be the last tip that I've got for everyone, is going to be color grade, color grade, color grade your footage. Now I know that not everyone is a professional photographer with the best camera and the most knowledge on how to do so, but if you look over here, and you probably can't tell because I'm color grading the footage right here, which is going on to this one that you're seeing right here too, I use a neutral color profile for my camera, which means I need to boost saturation, contrast, and all the other stuff. And once again, I do have my own preset for my color grid right here. I can put it onto anything and it instantly gets a whole lot better, more saturation, more sharpness, and more contrast as well. And that's going to be everything that I've got here today. I think that's pretty much it. So if you did enjoy this video, be sure to drop a like down below and subscribe for more future content. I know this is a very different type of video. So if you get to this stick all the way through, I really do appreciate you. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.